Thanks Paul from Model Build International. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're not far away from a thousand subscribers now. Today we're going to have a look at a new kit from Italia. This is their brand new T3485 with a full interior. Okay, a bit of history, but I'm not going to hark on much because there's lots of stuff out there about the T-34. So, uh, firing test against a uh, captured Tiger 1 in 1943 showed that the T-34 76mm gun was not going to cut it, not even close. Um, then they, f they found a, an 85mm anti-aircraft gun was kind of up to the job. It was never going to penetrate the front line of a Tiger, but... Um, it could penetrate the side armour from 800 metres. Um, still nowhere near as good as uh, the German 88mm, which would destroy a T-34 from one and a half to two kilometres out. So, they made the decision to retool the factories to produce an improved version of the T-34. Biggest change was a new turret. It's a larger three-man turret with radio observation coupled in the roof. Now the tank commander needed only to command, leaving the operation of the gun to the gunner and the loader. Um, this made the turret overall a bigger target, but more resistant. it was more resistant to enemy fire. Ammunition load shrank from 90 to 100 down to 55-ish shells, but the projectiles were 50% heavier and were much better in the anti-armor roll. Production of the T-3485 began in February 1944 and became the standard Soviet medium tank with uninterrupted production until the end of the war. Um, basically this tank it gave the Red Army a much better more mobility than the Panzer IV and Stug III's. Couldn't match the armour or weapons of the heavier Panther and Tigers, but its improved firepower made it more effective than early models and it was a much more cost-effective tank than the heavier German tanks. And it's been continues to be in use and recently the Laotian Army retired its T-34s earlier in 2019, sold them all to Russia and they'll all be used for public displays and museum exhibits. Okay, so let's have a look see what we get in the box. Um, start with T3485, 100% new mould, so a brand new kit. You won't have built this, this set of moulds before, this set of sprues. Number 64, sorry, 6545, 135th, decals for four versions, no figures included. And in here, you get two sets of tracks, rubber tracks or link and length tracks as well. Fully detailed interior, fully detailed engine, and photo etch. So let's look on the side. A couple of pictures. Um, these are actually on Italia's website as well, and I've also um, put them in the article on the website as well. So if you click on the link under the website, you'll see that there. And there's the P for it, just a small one. Nothing on the bottom of the box. There's your four decal options. Basically, well, variations on green, one's got winter camouflage. Um, they're all uh, three Russian, one Polish army. Um, so, let's have a look, see what we're getting inside. So, on top of the box, P fret, pretty large actually. Um, with not that many pieces on it, with a backing card. Deckle sheet is loose, it's a little unusual. Instructions, um, let's have a look, here we got. A bit of background, and then diagrams, and straight in nice big diagrams, which is pretty neat. The at the bottom here in Federal Standard and the Italieri uh, range, and obviously named as well. And then we go through the build, it is looks like 25 steps. We'll go through these in a bit more detail in a minute. Right here. 25 steps to build, colour. Um, decal placement charts. Um, yeah, basically three of them are green. Um, I don't know that one actually. 
looks like it's printed paler than those. The reference says it is exactly the same colours. And this one with the winter whitewash. That might be kind of neat to do. So that's that. Inside here we have one bag, two bags, two bags, and some rubber, rubber band tracks. So these are pretty good. It's nice detail on them. Some uh, extract marks on the top there that you'd have to do something with, I think, or you might be able to hide that actually. Uh, this side looks good. So they're doable, an option. Okay, I'll open the bags. Okay, here's the, uh, I've taken the main sprues out of the bags. So this is the first sprue, sprue A. Basically a whole bottom. There's detail on the inside where the driver goes. Let the eject pin marks will be out of the way, they won't be seen. Last it on there. Main hole. So that all looks pretty neat. Nice detail, and any eject pin marks are out of the way. Now, this one, I've actually got these two. I noticed that I think you're supposed to make these into tow cables. And they're just um, pieces of pieces of wire. So obviously, what you do is you pull the strands out, and then you'd have to twist them to actually turn them into uh, something like towing cables. That's a pretty neat idea, though, actually. <coughs> uh, two sets. Yep, two sets of this sprue. Some of the. Uh, the the transmission to the running gear, <coughs> one set of tracks, uh, the pin marks on the back there but won't be seen because they're in the middle, uh, so that's all cool, and some nice detail on there, hand holes, external fuel tanks, so that looks pretty good. <coughs> Then we've got one grey sprue. This, this is obviously the engine. This is sprue E. Um, there's some really quite nice detail on the engine itself. Be a shame to build the engine and then leave the hatches closed. Because this is quite nicely detailed. That looks pretty neat. And here's the T3485 turret. Which obviously is bigger than the uh, T3476 turret. You've got some shells. So extra uh, tank tracks for the outside. Barrel is main gun barrel is a two-part thing. And that looks quite nice. Some detail inside the bottom of the turret. Ejector pin marks here, but you won't see them because you'll be looking in from the bottom. And there's some detail on the side walls of the turret as well. So that looks pretty neat. And then this is, yeah, this is more interior stuff. Um, so there's this, if you look down inside, I think these are the things you will see um, on the inside of the main hole. And turret rings. So some nice detail on there. It looks pretty cool. I really like the engine. That's neat. So let's have a closer look at, uh, I'm not sure if I'll go through all the steps because there's 20 odd of them, but we'll go through definitely some of the steps. We'll definitely have a close-up of some of the parts. Close-up of all the parts will be on the website. The link is underneath. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the instructions. There's been quite a lot of kits of the T3485 over the years, almost 50 different boxings in fact. However, the kits done by Dragon, Zvezda, Maquette, Academy and AFV Club account for pretty much all of them. Italieri's previous T3485 kits were reboxings of the Zvezda kit. So this is Italieri's first set of T3485 moulds. The kit itself is described as a T3485 Zavod 183 Mod 1944. 
Um, that doesn't appear on the box top, but only on the instructions. Um, basically, it's saying this T-34 was built at the Zavad 183 factory in 1944. The kit, as I said, is from 100% brand new moulds, two different types of tracks, and has a full interior. Um, inside the box, we've got six sprues with 389 parts, a P fret with 27 parts, decal sheet, two wires, and a 20-page instruction booklet. Okay, let's go through some of the steps of the instructions. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's just too many. Just through a, a few key ones that give you an idea of what's going on. So we'll start off with steps three and four. Step three shows you uh, some interior parts going into the kit. Uh, compared to other kits uh, such as Miniat and I think FV who've done full interiors, the Italieri interior is somewhat simplified. So you've got less parts, it's easier to put it together. You don't end up with crazy part counts, which is pretty good. And then step four, where they're building the engine. Um, note that the engine, you get the top and the front and back. There's no sides, which is fine. It's a good simplification because you can't see anything. Um, so again, they're engineering it to look the part of a full interior, but not have uh, absolutely everything, all the stuff you can't see. A quick mention about step 10 and putting the tracks on. You do get two complete sets of different types of tracks. You've got the rubber band tracks and you've also got link and length tracks. So you can go for whichever you feel comfortable with. If you want to keep it easy, go with the rubber, rubber bands. If you want to uh, make it look a bit better and you've got a bit more time, go for the link and length tracks. Next steps 11 and 12. Um, putting together some parts onto the uh, the top of the hull. Um, notice there's a lot of parts which are optionally open or closed. This is a good thing since obviously you're putting an interior in there. It would be nice to be able to see some of it. Um, also the photo etch starts going on here with the main air intake and some uh, photo etch. You're also making together straps for the fuel tanks. Now look at step 18, putting some parts on the rear transmission cover. Um, note in this diagram, you get the option again of having this open or closed. You do get the full transmission is in there, so it will be look quite impressive. And you use there's one part of the PE, the, probably the biggest part of the PE photo etch is only used when this hatch is in the open position. So it's almost like they've actually you know they've designed it so that the hatches can be open to make the most of the interior parts. Step 23 is all about the turret. Uh, the turret has a nice cast texture to it, has a complete interior. There are some other parts inside the top of the turret as well, not just on the bottom. Uh, you get a full breech on the gun as well. Um, although it looks quite nice, there's quite a lot of parts go into the turret. Uh, and again, you can have the turret hatch hatches open or closed. Painting instructions are nice and clear, although for T-34s it's usually a simple overall bushel green. And these four options are no exception, with one has a winter whitewash that's worn off in several places. Paints are identified by name, federal standard number, and also using the Italieri acrylic range. You get one small decal sheet and each of the four build options has some decals on it, plus you get some stencils as well. So an overall conclusion. Um, it's a nicely detailed kit, good surface texture in the places that are supposed to have surface texture. Uh, giving you the choice of tracks is a good move, not everyone wants to deal with link and length tracks. Parts count is not crazy high for a kit with a full interior, so Italia have done their work in engineering it to be a, a simple build for a pretty impressive looking full interior tank. Um, full interior tanks have maybe 800 parts over double the parts count. So Italia, we've designed a very nice kit here that should appeal to a lot of people. And many thanks to Italia for sending this kit along for us to have a look at.